I just thought I'd tell you that all these fish, they're uh, genetically engineered to sit in the holes. How do they get to the holes? I don't know, but... Don't they have to go through here? Uh, answer me that, Mr. Wizard. Well, it's possible that they have to go through here, but I've been told by all the guys that fish in the holes that they've been genetically engineered to sit in the holes. And they can do that now with the hatchery technologies. They barge them around? I don't know, but they're not here at this time in this place. That's why we gotta go find the holes. I think there's a hole coming up. Wilson River in mid-February. Today we're going to try and uh, pick up a couple of uh, winter broodstock steelhead, possibly possibly a native or two if, uh, if the luck persists. And we're going to be throwing drift rods. My partner Mike has a drift rod also and I'm throwing an orange trout, custom trout bead with orange yarn on a red hook, which is actually on a pre-tied egg loop set up you can buy in your stores and I've got one to two number four or number five split shot and the uh, leader is attached with a double overhand knot real simple system I use the same system on my fly rod all the time and I'm using a either a 10 or a 12 pound test on here depending on the water right now it's pretty low so I've gone down to the 10 pound test I'm also fishing with this jig and bobber rod the idea here is that uh, if the water doesn't permit me to get a good drift through there, I can put this pink jig through there at any depth I want with the, uh, with the bobber system and then it won't get hung up in the bottom of the river as it uh, makes its way through there. You can see I'm currently set at close to four feet and uh, the jig is a pink double red egg bead jig and uh, I've added a little bit of a red rubber worm to the end of that just for a little bit of extra attractor, a little bit of extra action in the water. And uh, I'm also fishing 10 pound test on this setup here. And uh, this particular rod is a eight foot six G1000 Lamy glass. It's a great medium action uh, jig and bobber rod it's you know you could go a little longer if you want but this rod seems to have worked pretty good for me so we're just going to go and we're going to fish through a couple of these drifts and a couple of these holes with uh, the drift gear and the jig and bobber kind of as a backup and see which one of them will produce the luck for us today i'm hoping that there's a few more natives around or a few of those really big brood stock fish that we've been hearing about i've been hearing fish over 15 pounds so let's let's see what's out there this stretch of water that we're fishing is just tailor-made for jig and bobber and I really want to, I want to use that to my advantage and work this really good with that pink jig. It's kind of a long section of just drifts, semi-deep drifts. We're going to check this jig and bobber system right out into the water there and see what happens. Fishing real nice through there. I'm gonna feed it some line. Figure 
figure out a hook in a minute. Is it a big one? Yep. I don't have much control, it's pretty big. You saw the tail, it was like five or six inches wide. Maybe it's one of them big dogs. It's the money fish, as they say on the bass tournaments. Fighting like a typical steel, he's fighting like a salmon. Yeah. on this bar. Yeah, I don't even see the bobber anymore. Day three, still on the river. Let me grab him. Is it wild? Oh, it's a big root stock. Look at the size of that one. Look at that, you can see he took the jig in the corner of his mouth. Just a monster brute stock. Yeah. Let's get a tape on him. I'll hold this in if you want to stretch it down to his nose. Twist it. You, you got him bent a little bit too. Yeah, he's about, actually he's going over 30. He's hard to give him straight. He's about 35. Yeah, right around 35, 36 inches. Just a dandy Wilson River. Just a, just a dandy brute stock fish. Yeah. Look at that. You can see you just inhaled that jig. That's just amazing. We're going to take and let this fish go. Oh. Wow. What a fish. Just unbelievable. Went through there and that bobber just went straight under and I had no idea I was going to come up with such a nice fish. I had no idea. No more. Well, it looks like this little drift is putting a few fish out for us. I still can't believe the last size of that last broodstock fish. That, that was just a tremendous buck. You know, when I set the hook, I I knew right away that it was a big fish. And Mike came walking back up here. Put one pass out there. And look at this. He's hooked up. I'm hooked up. He's hooked up. Nice little chunk of chrome. Little native. All right, a nice Wilson River native here. Nice chrome, about six to seven pounds. 
we're gonna let this fish go to do its job. Just like that. Hey, let's get another one. <laughs> There goes an old summer run scooting by. It's been a long journey for him. Time for him to head back to the ocean. Jig and bobber system, it's just kind of a no-brainer. You just want to make sure your depth is controlled right. Just keep working across the river until you've covered everything and just kind of fan down as you go. This is a real easy way to fish. You won't be retying your gear much. You'll be watching your bobber all day instead of tying drift gear up. And this is really a great trick if you're fishing in a real snaggy river or a river that you just never seem to get your weight matched right. This system will just carry that jig right through that hole and when the fish hits it that bobber will just go underwater and you'll be just dialed. I can adjust the depth for every new hole I move to. I don't have to do anything but change the depth. If I wanted to fish two feet shallower all I gotta do in this case is just move my bobber down two feet and I'm ready to go. That's it's a slider. The bobber slides, but it's pegged to the pegged to the 10 pound test main line so that it can only slide when I move it. It's pretty snug. It's not totally tight. I don't want it to chafe the leader up, but it's tight enough to stay where I put it. So every time I move to a new hole, I just readjust it to fish that hole based on what I think the depth of that hole is. So what have you been getting your fish on, Mike? I've been using a uh, red bead, some pink and gold yarn, and a small chunk of borax eggs. Borax eggs. Uh, the steelhead like that stuff, don't they? Yeah, they do, and they're a lot cleaner to work with. And the bead is uh, like a custom trout bead, right? Well, that one's just kind of a generic red one, but this it could, is, be, yes. could be classified as uh, a custom trout bead. Yeah, sometimes I paint them sometimes to give them different hues. And then I run two split shot for weight. No swivels. Just everything rigged straight on the main line. Now you just tie the hook onto your main line is Snelled style, don't you? Yes. that pink jig again. Just a beautiful, beautiful native fish. Look at that. There's a full dorsal, full adipose fins. Oh no, hang on there, sweetie. Let's get the jig out first. Let's get the jig out. 
dig out first. Just a beaut of a hen. Look at that, just chrome bright native, native hen. She's probably about 12 pounds. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna release her. Well, all in all, not a bad day. We hooked four fish, actually landed four. Two on the uh, jig and bobber and two on the drift rake with, uh, I believe he was using eggs on both of those. So that's not too bad for just coming down here and checking some brood stock winter steelhead out here, middle of February. Still snow on the ground. Yeah, still snow on the ground. But uh, all in all, not too bad. Uh, really nice brood stock fish. I guess this, these programs w seem to work pretty good as far as getting back some real nice fish. Lots of jumps, lots of exciting action. So uh, what do you think? You about ready to go? I'm ready to go. We hit her hard. We got what we got. We got what we got. Thank you.